It's not that we don't know what to eat or what not to eat. It's that knowing what not to eat never, ever, ever stopped wanting to eat it. This is Katie Gordon, and you're listening to the Wait Is Over podcast. Welcome health and freedom seekers. Sit back and relax as you come on this journey of overcoming obstacles so you can lose weight, gain health and live the life you've been looking for. Hello listeners and welcome to this week's show. I'm your host Katie Gordon and the wait is over with Dietless Living 360 Degrees. There's no recipes, food regimes or exercise programs to follow. This is simply about how to take your life back, how to take control because we all have a voice and we want to be heard. We want to forget about dieting, focus on living and lose weight. And to do that, we need to create a new mindset, a mindset that gets us over the obstacles and challenges of life and our own unconscious programs, because that's really what's impacting on our weight and health and causing habit relapse. And the purpose of this podcast is to share with you what I learned over 25 years in dieting hell and spending over $100,000 working out how to step into dietless living because nobody should have to go through that amount of BS just to lose weight permanently. And today we're talking about when you find yourself in that situation where you're wondering how the hell did you get there? And specifically when we put on weight and we didn't notice it was happening. It's such a weird thing to to actually be a part of. And people go, how did you not notice you were putting on weight? Well, it's happened to me many, many times. And that's actually how I always felt every time I regained that 20 kilos. How the hell did I get here once again? And I really just couldn't understand how the hell it just kept happening again and again. And how come I didn't simply just arrest this situation when I had put on one or two or three or even five kilos? How come I always got to be that, you know, 20 kilos overweight or somewhere in that vicinity? How could I not notice that I was actually getting fat? Like how did I not notice that I was going from size 10 to size 16? How didn't I notice when I was looking in the mirror that my body shape was changing? You know, there's a big difference between a size 10 body and a size 16 body. There's a big difference in body shape when you add 20 kilos on. So how does it happen? How could I have tolerated it and let it happen to me over and over? But, you know, if I'd have taken the time back then to do what I did in 2011 and sort of take a proper look each time, there was a trail of breadcrumbs back to where things started to go down a slippery slide back to when I could have taken corrective action and changed the course of what was going on, where things could have taken a different path if I'd have just applied a little bit of change. If I'd have taken a hard stop, whoa, just stop right here now, Miss Gordon, and reassessed what I was doing and where I was heading and applied an actual uncomfortable adjustment and corrected course. But that's not what we do. Instead, we make an adjustment that makes our current circumstances feel comfortable for us. We don't like discomfort in any way, shape or form, and we rarely make ourselves uncomfortable on purpose. And what we do is we make adjustment after adjustment after adjustment to turn uncomfortable situations into comfortable. We do this in life, not just with our weight. We do this in life and it's generally what is happening in life that is creating a change in what's happening in our weight. So why the hell do we do it? I mean, we're not stupid. We're far from that. We're intelligent. 
women and men. So why do we ignore what's actually happening until our weight is so far gone that it becomes this monumental challenge for us to change? We do it because it's the easy option. We're not equipped with the skills and resources to face what's happening in our life head on or in our way. We're busy, busy people, and there's generally a lot of shit going on or going down in our life at all times. And so we always make adjustments to make it easy on ourselves and give ourselves a bit of an easy out. It's not that we don't argue with ourselves about what we're doing or that we don't feel remorse for letting ourselves down and not keeping our promises to ourselves. I mean, we know we're doing that shit, so why do we continuously feel disempowered against ourselves and hit repeat on all our habits and behaviours that are actually keeping us stuck? I made so many comfortable adjustments that it resulted in 25 years in yo-yo weight loss, weight gain, but I did finally work it out and I actually did get to turn it all around. And you know what? I'm just an ordinary person. So if I can do it, you can too. And it's been my experience that we can't just change one thing. We can't just change this one thing and expect it to stick if the rest of our supporting behaviours are going to remain the same. You can't just change your diet and your exercise habits and expect them to stick if you're still living the rest of your life in exactly the same way. If you're still running at life at a fast clip, if you're still a workaholic or feeling lethargic and unmotivated, you can't still be complaining all day about shit and still living in fear and frustration and giving in to people, not speaking up for yourself, waking up every morning with the same grizzle guts voice, you know, guiding you through the day and either avoiding uncomfortable conversations or starting arguments with anyone who disagrees with you. These are the little stacks in the dominoes fall that will lead you back to the habits that you have that keep you putting on the weight that stops you from having the life that you want to have. We have to address all things in our life and at least acknowledge what's happening and how it's affecting us because only then can we begin to create the changes that will actually lead to the forever results that we're looking for, the forever results that we desire and so desperately want. And it's, it's not hard, but we have to change more than just one thing. We're human beings. We don't live fairy tale lives after we've overcome the big obstacle because it's just not how it works for us. But that's what marketing tells us. It tells us that if you lose the weight, your life will be sunshine, lollipops and rainbows. It's like the ultimate tampon ad, isn't it? You know, it's that running, jumping, skipping, the the love of your life holding you uh, passionately in their arms. You feel confident, charismatic, and you're just the life of the party. But that's not how we roll. The insecurities, relationship and financial work issues that plagued us before we lost the weight don't just simply go away when the weight goes away. And how we're dealing with stress, fear and anxiety just doesn't suddenly change just because we've lost the weight. Because under stress, we just don't invent new strategies. We fall back into the old ones that our brain and body already know work for relieving tension and stress. Just changing what you eat and increasing exercise isn't the answer because being overweight isn't the actual problem. It's the result. It's not the problem. Let me say that again. Being overweight isn't the problem. It's the result of the problem. And the problem is what we need to address to be able to change the result. Changing diet and exercise won't change the problem but to be fair it will help as a lot of the food and the lack of exercise contributes to physical and mental frustrations which are all tightly coupled in that unaddressed problem. 
But until you build the new skills and strategies and make real change for yourself and change how you think, feel and deal with life moment by moment, situation by situation, if you don't have an arsenal of tools at the ready, you will forever be on that dieting hamster wheel. And we all want our lives to be better. We want to have choices, freedom and control. We want to have choices in food, movement and lifestyle. We want to have freedom in our mind and body. And we want to have control of our weight, our health and our happiness and ultimately our life. And there's a library of weight loss solutions out there and they're all packed with programs about what you can and can't eat and how you should and shouldn't be exercising. But nobody's preparing you for the myriad of internal and external obstacles and challenges that you're ultimately going to have to face and the habit relapse that leads you back to where you began. There is more to permanent weight loss, elevated mental, emotional and physical health and happiness than just what we eat and how we exercise. I mean, you've got grit right? You've succeeded in and overcome 50 things in your life. You can succeed at this too, but you've been struggling with it for so long that it just feels impossible. I struggled with it for 25 long years and choices, freedom and control were not my experience. I felt very much out of control. And I think that's the appeal of going on the diet. It feels like we're taking control But restricting food isn't control, it's controlling. It's controlling ourselves. It's trying to control and force ourselves into a way of living and being. And, you know, it's not that we don't know what to eat or what not to eat. It's that knowing what not to eat never, ever, ever stopped wanting to eat it. So when we're on a diet and we get to the stage where the wanting is the loudest force in our mind and body, there's no connection with ourselves or understanding of those driving forces. And that's ultimately why we lose control and have a habit relapse. And we accept defeat in weight loss when we're not even defeated. But you know, there is always a way that when you're ready, doors will actually open because if it's important to you, you will find a way. There are always going to be distractions, so don't give in to them. Just get on and get started now. The game of life is a very long game and you've got everything to play for in the coming rounds. Thank you for watching or listening today. If you want more help with this, just book in for a private session and let's just get it done this week because life is for living and an ounce of adjustment is always easier to implement than 20 pound of change. It really is time to live the life you've been looking for.